Hi, welcome to biology classes with Lakshmi Chandra. In today's session, I am going to take you to a most famous technique used in biotechnology, one of the most famous techniques for separating DNA fragments and that technique is called as gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis. So from the word itself, you can understand that it is something related to a jelly-like material and there is use of electricity here and electricity is actually doing this process of electrophoresis. So it is gel electrophoresis. And you know, this technique is basically a separation technique and using this technique, we can separate DNA fragments as well as proteins. So based on whether we are going to separate the DNA fragments or the proteins, the gel that we use, it differs. In today's session, I'll take you towards the gel electrophoresis technique, wherein we use it for separating the DNA fragments. So as I told, the major gel that is used here for separating DNA fragments, it is agarose gel agarose gel so when i say gel electrophoresis in this session i should specify it as agarose gel electrophoresis because i am pointing towards the separation of dna fragments so now i think it's very clear to you gel electrophoresis are of many types okay based on the molecules that you are taking for separation and here, when we use agarose gel, it is used for separating DNA fragments. Now, what is that fragment? How do you get DNA fragments? I hope if you have referred to my previous videos, uh, I had told you regarding detail regarding a very wonderful enzyme used in molecular biology called as restriction enzymes. These enzymes act as molecular scissors. They go and cut the DNA fragments at specific regions. And once the DNA fragments are cut, we need these fragments to be separated from each other. And then we want our DNA fragment of our interest. So this technique, gel electrophoresis, is actually a continuation of restriction digestion. After you cut the DNA into fragments, you want to take the DNA of your choice. For that, you have to separate the DNA fragments. So this technique of agarose gel electrophoresis here I have put under three heads for easy understanding. First, we we'll learn about what is the principle behind this process. Next, we we'll learn the actual process that is the materials required and how it is done, followed by its applications in day-to-day -day activities or in a scientific field. Okay, so agarose gel electrophoresis we will be learning under these three heads. First, let us see what is the principle of this particular technique. So basically, if a question is what is gel electrophoresis, your answer should be it's a separation technique. Okay, so basic principle like it, that it is, it is a separation technique. So whenever you go for a separation technique, for example, I take the process of say decantation. Okay, you have learned in lower classes decantation, that's a separation technique. So that is based on density. You take sand and water if you want to separate a muddy water what you will do is just you will stir the water and you will place it there for some time the mud which is denser than water will settle down and the clear water will be there on the top which you can separate out so that is a separation technique that here the basis is based on density so whenever in in future also whenever you learn about a separation technique the principle is it is based on what based on what the separation happens so here the separation is based on size size so here means i am telling you agarose gel electrophoresis where you use dna as a sample for separation there the basis is based on size but when you are asked simply what is the principle of gel electrophoresis there it is not only size but you take the charge also into account 
because as i have told you before it is it is movement in an electric field so movement in electric field is all based on charges so simply if the question is what is the principle of gel electrophoresis it is the principle based on uh, size to mass uh, size to charge ratio that is the principle but here in dna i am not using the word charge here charge that means whether it is having a positive charge or negative charge that i am not saying here because we all know our dna is having only negative charge there is no dna having positive charges and those who have watched my videos on the structure of dna might know the reason behind it why dna is a negatively charged molecule i hope you remember exactly DNA is negatively charged because it is having phosphate molecule. The phosphate molecule in DNA makes it negatively charged. So here, whatever DNA we are taking for separation, all DNA molecules are having negative charge. So that charge we cannot focus here. Now the next thing is that we are going to focus is size. So here, the separation technique, the principle that is the separation technique of DNA here, it is based on size okay and it is separating it is getting separated through a garros gel i told you this before it is getting separated through a garros gel what is the speciality of this agarose gel you know this agarose gel is actually obtained from a seaweed a plant which is there in unwanted thing in sea and all sea ocean and all deep under seaweed is like gelatin and all such from such plants this agarose is obtained and it is in the form of a powder and it never dissolves in water okay this powder you just put it in water it will not dissolve so what you have to do is you have to heat it once you heat it no it gets mixed up and after heating when you cool it solidifies it solidifies into a gel very fluffy slimy like structure gel so it never dissolves but you have to heat it and then you get this gel agarose gel so once this heating and then cooling is done this agarose gel will form criss crosses with each other with their molecules they form many hydrogen bonds inside with this water and they will form criss crosses so there will be like sieve like appearance sieving you know sieve like appearance will be there and through these sieves only this dna will start moving so agarose is showing a sieving effect here and through this see what happens the dna moves the dna moves towards anode under electric field so this area is coming under actually the process dna moves through the agarose gel into the anode through under an electric field so this is coming under the process so before explaining the actual process let me tell you what are the ingredients required here okay what are the things required for doing this particular technique of gel electrophoresis as told you need a buffer sorry you need a garros gel okay then you need an electrophoresis apparatus which is having anode and cathode okay anode is a positive terminal cathode is a negative terminal of the electrophoresis apparatus you need a buffer buffer is a solution which conducts this electricity which conducts this ions which aids in the movement okay so buffer is there then dna tracking dye dna tracking dye dna you know it is colorless agarose gel is also colorless so if whether this dna is moving through the gel and how far it has reached we have to track it down and for tracking we use a dye we use either bromophenol blue usually this is used or xylene cyanol any one of these two dyes are used along with the dna sample it is added added along with the dna sample and you call that as the dna tracking dye okay and one more dye you use that is dna staining dye dna staining dye okay so this here dna staining dye is either ethidium bromide or cyber green usually this ethidium bromide is most commonly used but this ethidium bromide is highly highly carcinogenic so nowadays it is substituted by cyber green cyber green 
and after that one more thing that is DNA ladder also we need so uh, I'll give you an explanation of all these things of uh, all these ingredients how they are used in gel electrophoresis in the next video so in this video I am just telling you regarding the principle what are the actual ingredients required and then I'll take you to the applications once you understand the base the next video I'll tell you how exactly the process is happening let's move on to the application part so here the application it is used to estimate the size of DNA fragments we have the DNA fragment as I have told you it is cut into pieces many fragments and now we don't know actually how, how much base pair is each fragment we don't know the length so we can actually find out the length of those fragments using gel electrophoresis so this is a separation technique based on size and using this technique we can also find out the size of DNA fragment I think that is very wonderful isn't it it is also used to analyze PCR products PCR you this is you you might have heard about this PCR RT PCR and all I have just put a video on PCR also you can go through that okay once the PCR products are you got this particular a gel electrophoresis is again used to analyze those PCR product that is another application then gel electrophoresis have got a wonderful use in DNA fingerprinting DNA fingerprinting is again it is used in forensic investigations like from the crime site you got a DNA sample and you have two suspects you want to find out whether the suspect was there in that crime spot or not so with this DNA sample that you got you try to match it with these two suspects and if it is getting matched we can infer that yes this person was there at the crime scene but we cannot say that the person has done the crime that is different okay just we can match and find out whether the person was there or not so it is highly aiding in that investigations forensic investigations and also parentage parentage in order to prove okay who is actually the biological father of a child we can use again gel electrophoresis so that is actually coming under a basic technique called as DNA fingerprinting so the video regarding this also I'll put soon for you okay so in this video I just wanted to tell you regarding the basic principle the basic ingredients the exact process I'll explain to you in the next video and the applications so dear students if you are asked about gel electrophoresis understand that it is actually through under electric field the fragments whatever we want to separate is moving okay and if we are intending to uh, separate DNA we use agarose gel if we are intending to separate proteins we use another gel called as polyacrylamide that I'll take you in, in, in another video this is a very long process actually so it cannot be completed in one video so definitely I'll put come with another video in which I'll be explaining to you the whole process thank you for now